All right, this video isn't really a show and tell video. It's for people that are at my level and they decide they want to build an IF can. Now, uh, I, I deleted some videos a couple months ago and uh, here was my attempt to make an IF can and uh, I've refined it, okay? This is what you'll find inside of uh, an IF can. You have two coils and in this case they're close together because this is the first IF can. As you go up in the IFs these two coils will be spaced apart. Now these are one millihenry coils uh, with 120 picofarads across them. They resonate at 455. Okay now on the top there you can see these little miniature tuning capacitors. Okay, now I can't show you the fixed capacitors that will be across these rails because uh, they're stuck in the post office. Okay, every one of my projects for two years has had one part or another get stuck in the post office. Okay, but this is built using pieces of copper. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, how quickly you can build an IF can. Okay. You buy some of this perf board. It's got uh, soldered rings. Okay, I hope you can see it. They're silver. They go through the sides. They go through each side. It's an eyelet. And these make really good um, IF cans because you can solder the wire. The wire itself comes up to the end hole. It loops over and down until it. That's to make it more sturdy. And then you just solder them on the corners and that's it that's the construction and then you wire in your your coils okay you don't know how to do that you shouldn't be making an IF can but that's what I use now you, you look at those those rods and you say well how did you make them so straight okay let me teach you something that most of you don't know okay this is bell wire uh, doorbell wire it comes twisted pair sometimes red and white sometimes red white and black uh, I use this also for uh, crystal radio uh, coils. You can do like a, uh, a lattice loop or different kinds using the posts. But anyway, I had this left over. So the first, the first step you have to do is you have to strip it, right? All right. All right, so now we got a piece of copper. Okay. Looks nice, don't it? Looks fairly straight. It's not straight. So in other words, you straighten this out as best you can get it. Now, the old timers in RCA, they put one end in the vise and they pull it real hard with a pair of pliers. But that's not how I do it. I get it straight as I can by eye. And you lay it there on a flat piece of wood. You take another flat piece of something, lay it on there. Push it down, roll it back and forth, and voila, you have a nice straight piece, okay? Actually, do it a little better than that. Okay, that's how you can make some really straight uh, copper wire, okay? So if you want to make something really look nice, okay? Now, this will go inside a piece of one, one inch square aluminum tubing. There'll be, um, there'll be little uh, brackets because you have to mount this aluminum to the chassis. Or you have to have a wire from the aluminum to ground. Or this becomes an antenna and it mixes with other ones. Even though this would be inside of this box, it'll become an antenna and the signals can actually mix. And there'll be a cap that goes on here with two holes in it so you can make the adjustments. This both sides of this coil, uh, both inductors or both both windings, uh, will be tuned. This is for a tube radio. Okay. Now, what got me back on this again was this is for a command radio. This is an 85 kilocycle coil. This goes in the one that uh, is used for a Q5. Uh, I saw this up on. On eBay, the guy had a few of these things. 
uh, I like to go inside the stuff and I didn't want to touch the ones on my radios. Now there's four bolts out here. One, two, three, four. You don't have to worry about marking it. It's got a mark. So when you put it back together, you have to undo this screw cap. The screw cap is just a dust cap. And then out comes. Okay, see how nice this is? You notice that they use a spacer, a long spacer screw, okay, to hold the assembly. And up at the top are two trim capacitors. And they're quite large. And here's your fixed ones. My fixed ones for mine are in the post office, okay? Now, you notice the coils. See the two coils? They're fairly close together. This is the first IF can. As it goes up in frequency, these bad babies get further apart. And there is an adjustment. There is an adjustment. This is an adjustment. And when you do alignment on this radio, uh, to get the bandwidth that you want, besides setting the two frequencies of the two coils so they resonate, you can also move uh, this post. And it moves the distance of the coil further apart from each other okay and that improves your selectivity remember I told you you have sensitivity and selectivity okay sensitivity is if there was only one station in the world on your radio would be sensitive enough to pick it up now where selectivity is important is if you pick up a station that's really far away and you're listening to it and over the years, they put a station right next to it that is closer to you, and it's got more power. And when you turn your favorite station on, you can't hear it because your radio is not selective enough. It's sensitive enough, but the sensitivity does you in. It allows you to pick up a station that's closer to you on an adjacent frequency. But if the radio has both sensitivity and selectivity, you notice nothing. You notice you can listen to the station that's far away, or you can listen to the station that's loud and close to you, okay? But I just wanted to show you what I'm working with. And um, these these chokes, this is a 10 mil Henry. I'm using a 1 mil Henry choke. And like I said, if you put 120 picofarad across one of these, it'll resonate at 455, 455 kilocycles uh kilohertz okay a lot of people use kilohertz i'm an old timer and we used to use kilocycles but that's the coil i'm using and you want the coils like in my um frequency injector box okay you want the coils head to head okay that's what a magnetic field comes out of if you put them side by side there is a set of head um a guy shows how to make an if can he does this that's not good it works but you don't get your selectivity by doing this. All right, selectivity. Further apart, more selective, more selective. But at the same time, you have to have enough amplification. But if you open up IF cans, first IF, second IF, third IF, okay? That's all it really is to it. They got to resonate. And trust me, the Q of these coils is real high. That those coils are sitting in there on ceramic posts, and they're wave wound. And they're wave wound with, with Litz wire. And Litz wire is multi-strand, multi-stranded wire, but I want to explain this to you. Each strand of the multi-strand wire has uh, enamel on it. So the strands do not short out to each other, only on the ends. And you say, well, why? Well, skin effect. As frequency goes up, the electrons are pushed out of the wire. As the AC signal or AC frequency signal goes back and forth through the wire, it forces the electrons to the surface of the wire. So only the surface conducts. So if you've got a real thick wire, only the outside edges of the wire are actually conducting. The center is, is empty. Well, the electrons are pushed to the outside. So by using multiple strands of wire that are insulated from each other, and then tinning them at the ends together, uh, the wire becomes more conductive, uh, uh, less resistance at the frequency. And it becomes, the Q of the coil goes up, which is quality of the coil. All right, And that's what they were using 
before World War II. Really well stuff. Now this is a this is what you'd call a golden idol. See, it says prime standard ceramic, uh, October 1944. So this is sort of a collectible. But I bought it just so I could open one of these up. And um, I know I've opened so many um, uh, IF cans up in my lifetime. I told you, as a kid, I used to go around on garbage night, pull radios out of the garbage, and fix them. And then either give them away, sell them, whatever I did, or just take them apart for parts. Now, I took many an IF can open, okay? And the real old radios from the 30s have stuff like this. And then uh, the worst ones are Hellcrafters. They're junk. They're actually, they actually look like um, uh, car radio IF cans. They're, they're the ones that get the silver mica disease. Um, Hammerland and that, that's what you're going to see in their radios. When you open up an IF can, it's a treat for the eyes, okay? I don't know how into electronics you are, but this is the bit, this is the, the cat's meow. Or the, what's the cat's meow? Bird's beak? No, anyway, it's the cat's, it's the cat's meow. And uh, I want to tell you about putting coils, and then this is my signal injector. It's got two large coils, end to end. And this is uh, basically the same circuit as a signal injector from like the 1960s. And uh, I figured out how to do it. And I built it in an Altoids can. But this this freak, this here, well, one millihenry choke is good for 455 with 120 picofarad cap across it. Now, what I'm doing is, where did my, my IF can go? Is it hiding in here? Here it is. Okay. So, I'll put two, two 100 picofarads on the rails. Which will be across each capacity, each inductor will have 100 picofarad across it. And then these are 60 picofarad tunables in parallel. So I can tune this into 120 picofarads in or out, get this to resonate, and get it to work. But I've gone further on my IF can than if you saw the other video. And I also wanted to show you the inside, what a really incredibly good looking one looks like. You know, and these, these capacitors, I believe the it looks like they're brass, and brass, uh, when it comes to a trim capacitor, uh, brass doesn't flex as much uh, temperature-wise. Okay, so this this thing this plus it's 85 kilohertz wide. You know this is this is cat's meow. Okay, there's another one of those things. The bee's knees, yeah, the bee's knees. There you go. All right, I think that's it. This is part one, and I'm waiting on my capacitors. But I want to show you how easy it is to, to make something like this, you know. And underneath here is going to be a square piece of PVC tubing, a PVC plastic, quarter inch. And it's going to be a, a square thing. It's going to have a screw to hold it to the bottom of this, a bolt to hold it to this. And then the other one to hold it when it's, when it's mounted. Uh, this will screw into the, then into the plastic piece. And uh, it'll be similar to this. Okay, in this case, they're very slick. They used aluminum. So the mounting yoke on the bottom of this goes into the aluminum. And then the side goes in and um, shorts the case to the ground. Okay, so once it's mounted, it's fine. But in my case, I have to, uh, I have to put little uh, aluminum ears down off, off this. In here to have my ground so if I, I do not but yeah I'm working on the IF can just to like I said in my lifetime I took so many of them apart and uh, it, it, it's pretty funny but to, when you really get into electronics you realize that all IF cans are not 455 you can get in some real big arguments with people oh all IF cans are 455 and then there's the stories why they're 455 and there's a couple of reasons why they use 455. Uh, one of the reasons is you don't want, you want the IF can frequency to be outside the band you're trying to receive. The other thing is they wanted the oscillator from each radio in a house. If it was in an apartment house, the oscillator is running at a frequency that nobody's on. Because if you had a, a radios that the manufacturer used any 
IF frequency they wanted to, it is possible that someone sitting, having the radio sit on their countertop of their kitchen, they got their station on, and then their oscillator is running on a frequency someone else is trying to pick a station up. So they standardized everything. And these old radios from World War II, uh, 45 kilohertz, all right, a kilocycles, if you're old school. And uh, one of them was uh, 1.415, and then the other one I think was 2 megacycles, or megahertz. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's interesting. But they made sure that each command radio, the IF can frequency, was not in the band they were trying to receive. Because all shortwave radios, like a Hellcrafters, uh, that 455, uh, when you, I think when you go down to long wave, you can actually get the radio to go into some oscillation. But these, you know, a good radio, when you take an IF can and open it up, okay, like a Collins, okay, a National's got some decent looking ones, okay. Hellcrafters are total freaking garbage. That's why people go, oh, Hellcrafters, S40, that's a good radio. You're crazy. You're delirious. You've never worked on one. You've never opened up an IF can. You've never looked at the coils on that radio, okay? There's good and there's bad. But a really good coil is wound with Litz wire. And the cheaper sets, it still works. It still works with just enamel wire. And you wind it in a wave pattern. You get a pretty good cue, but not as good as the better set, okay? And over the years, this is what they're using. They're using uh, ferrite donut, or uh, ferrite dog bone, and then they wind real fine wire on it. And in a, such a small space, you can have one millihenry. That's not one microhenry, that's one millihenry. And uh, it, the size difference between a 455 coil and then this coil is totally different. Now, will this be able to handle the current of a tube? I don't know. You know, I'm sort of, you know, I build myself some IFs. Okay, that's what I do. I'm a what if guy. Well, how, how can I build an IF cam using materials I can find? Okay, and the, 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 real, the real breakthrough is getting a perf board like this. And I, I, they're on, it was on eBay, and the guy was dying to get rid of it. I bought sheets of this stuff. And uh, it worked out. And that actually lined up where you cut it in the holes, and then you sand it a little bit, and then it just happens to fit in in, in this tubing. And this is about 7 eighths on the outside, you know. But, it, you know, you can solder to it. It holds this whole thing together. That's how I think. And, uh, you know, I spent days thinking about it. And I knew to put the coils end to end. I learned that on the signal injector. I learned that on looking at something like that. The coils end to end. It's not alongside each other. And that's so if you want more selectivity, you move that coil further up, and here's the adjustment. But you better know what you're doing. That's why on a command radio, I don't touch any of the settings on the IF cans. And every time I bought a radio, I was praying that nobody had messed with it. Because when they, when they uh, bodge a radio, uh, you know, they've been in here, they've tried soldering stuff. And uh, this is a real old-fashioned ceramic capacitors, you know. See, I like some old, really old stuff. I also like some really new stuff. And I have new IF cans, the little miniature ones for the uh, transistor radios. Uh, I found a place online. One day this guy had a whole crap load. And they explained, you know, they wanted like, uh, I think it was $1.50 for a set of four. And one of them is the, uh, uh, they give you an extra first IF. They had both kinds, uh, tuned, uh, tuned uh, primary or tuned secondary. They gave you one of each and then a set of IFs because you got the uh, you got the mixer, the first and second IF, and then you got the detector. Okay, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, you know, certain things, I know how to repair it and the basics on how it works. But actually, you know, you tell me what's going to be inside of this. The only way I know is, man, I took a lot of these apart and I unwound the Litz wire and even though I did that many, I didn't understand what Litz wire was. Go look it up. It's really incredible stuff. Okay? There's a lot to electronics. That's why these guys on sit on the group, oh, all you do is take two, two chokes. 
put them side by side, put some caps across it. You know, what value cap? What value cause? And they don't answer because they don't know. They're just spouting, repeating like a parrot. Like I told you, my grandmother would say to me every time she saw me, you know, you can make a crystal radio set out of a Quaker Oats box. Well, that's as far as that conversation would go. Then my father had one, he'd say, you know, they used to put tube radio schematics in the, in the newspaper on Sundays. Yeah. What was this? And he'd say that a lot. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. He was just, he had these canned sayings. And if you look like you're interested in a, a circuit, you look at, you know, they used to put radio schematics and how to uh, projects in the, in the Sunday newspaper. What does that do for me? That rates right up there with my grandmother going, you know, you can make a crystal radio set out of a Quaker Oats box. Well, I think that's it. All right, that's it.